Texas this election cycle is the governor's race, but the actual showdown won't happen until the general election. During the primaries, the winners were pretty clear from the beginning. For the Republican nomination, current Governor Abbott won in a landslide with 67% of the vote, using the win to promise, promising to create jobs, support law enforcement, and looking back on his history as governor. Republicans sent a message. They want to keep Texas the land of opportunity and prosperity for absolutely everybody, the prosperity that we have delivered over the past eight years. Shortly after, Abbott shifted his focus to addressing his Democratic opponent, saying that he wanted a completely different Texas. Meanwhile, on the Democratic side, Beto O'Rourke won with ease, taking 91% of the votes, promising that he, if he were to win, his policies would benefit all Texans. The things that we want are not just good for Democrats. They're not just good for Republicans or independents either. They are good for all of us. We want to make sure. O'Rourke highlighted policies like expanding Medicare, supporting education, and creating jobs. He then went on to address Abbott, referencing some of the more controversial topics like the governor's stance on abortion and energy grid as well as more. And while the governor's race is one of the bigger ones, one of the tightest races we saw yesterday was for the next attorney general. Both parties are now expecting a runoff. This happens when one candidate does not receive at least 50% of the vote, which is required for a candidate to win the nomination. On the Republican end, Ken Paxton only won 43% of the vote. He'll go against George P. Bush, who won 23% of the vote. However, Paxton said he's not worried about this outcome, and Bush said he was happy that Paxton will have to continue to answer to voters. Meanwhile, on the Democratic side, Rochelle Mercedes Garza, who claimed 44% of the vote, will go up against Joe Jaworski, who claimed 20% of the vote. That runoff is set to happen on May 24th. Meanwhile, there are some pretty important races locally, like the race for the McLennan County District Attorney, with a heated competition between Josh Tetons and Barry Johnson. In the end, Tetons was able to successfully unseat the incumbent with 70% of the votes. Now, despite the loss, incumbent Barry Johnson gracefully accepted the results and is now focused on completing the rest of his term. Six News' Matt Lively was in Waco with Johnson on election night and was able to get his reaction to the results. Barry Johnson was adamant that he wanted to thank his many supporters who came to the Salty Dog Bar and Grill in Waco on Tuesday night to support him in the McLennan County District Attorney Republican primaries. With the results official just after 9 p.m. that Josh Tetons was the winner of this election, Johnson conceded and had this to say. Uh, somewhat surprised, but uh, it's just politics. So, uh, you know, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose, and... Uh, Hey, I'm just here to congratulate Josh Tetons. Uh, I tried to call Josh, couldn't get his phone number. So Josh, if you're listening, I just want to tell you congratulations. You ran a great race and uh, I wish you the absolute best. Uh, enjoy this uh, victory and uh, hey, I, I, I'm uh, very happy for you. He says that for the remainder of his term, border prosecution is important. He wants to continue to do well with mental health court, vets court, and for lots of cases to be tried now that the courthouse is back open. Reporting here in Waco, Matt Lively, 6 News. So, you know, all eyes are going to be on that November election. Uh, district attorney is a a big and powerful position in our local races. I know a lot of people pay attention to government, uh, governor's race and presidential, but DA's office, it's important too. Yeah, and uh, Barry Johnson had a, a, a very focused on race when he was running for district attorney, of course, in the wake of the Twin Peaks trials yeah. uh, against Abel Reyna. So this was certainly another one that they had the eyes on and another change now in McLennan County at that position. Yeah. All right, meanwhile, the winner, Josh Tetons, is now needing to prepare to take office next year. Six News reporter Bailey Bates spent Tuesday evening with the Republican nominee. She joins us with more on his win. Josh Tetons says he wants to increase the efficiency of the district attorney's office and also create better relationships with local law enforcement. He says that started Tuesday night with the win over current DA Barry Johnson. After months of campaigning and even facing attacks from an opponent, Josh Teton secures the Republican nomination for McLennan County District Attorney. Surrounded by friends and family Tuesday night as votes come in claiming his victory, a sense of pride and happiness fills the room. 
Teton's ran his campaign on the idea that he can better the McLennan County DA's office. And he says the number one priority is communication and bettering relationships with local law enforcement. We know that if we have law enforcement out there protecting us in a district attorney's office, prosecuting criminals, holding people accountable, and fantastic judges doing the same, that we will reduce the crime rate, we will have a safer community, and again, I cannot thank everyone enough for all of their support and all of the time that they have spent to get that message out. Deaton's was endorsed by McLennan County Law Enforcement Association and Waco Police Association as the next county DA. Teton says his fight is far from over. He and Democrat Aubrey Robertson will go head to head for the position on November 8th. Back to you guys. Something else that we followed yesterday closely was the race for the next member on the Texas Board of Education. For the Democratic nomination, Tracy Fisher ran uncontested, so she secured the vote there. In the general election, Fisher will now be going up against Evelyn Brooks. Brooks managed to unseat Sue Melton, who was running for her fourth term on the board. Brooks took 57% of the vote, claiming the Republican nomination. Going into the general election, the two have very different positions on education topics. One of Brooks' main goal is to increase parental authority in the education of their child. Meanwhile, the Democratic candidate wants to rethink Texas's testing standards to focus more on deeper learning, reinvest taxpayer dollars into the classroom, and elevate educators. Now, these are just some of the races that happened on Tuesday. There were a ton more local and state races that we haven't gotten to touch on yet. For a full list of those races, head over to our website, kcentv.com, or you can just text us if that's easier for you. All you have to do is text the word results to 254-777-6000. We will send you a list of all the race results straight to your phone.